Today I'm going to do something I have no idea what it is. I want to show you though, while doing this, how much freedom you can have as a realist painter. Uh, I'm starting with a black canvas, uh, blank canvas, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. But that's what's so fun. Why should the modernists have all the fun in the world? Why can't I be spontaneous? I don't need a photograph in front of me. Uh, I don't need to be in a place in particular. I can just start. I have a medium on the canvas. In fact, my pal I don't have a big enough palette, so I'm going to put the paint right on the canvas. It's going to be kind of cloudy, complex cloudy sky. In fact, I probably even put too much medium on this canvas. And um, I'm going to let, you know, it doesn't matter. Got a little bit too much it's dripping. Um, that's all right. Who cares? Um, I've got the. I put the white here. So we don't even need a palette, okay? I mean, that's the fun part, all right? We don't need a palette. That's just white. So let's just see how that's showing up on the camera. Okay, so that we got white, and now get a little bit of blue. Bring it in. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm just making making up a giant salad. I know there's gonna be water in front of it, so I'm gonna do a scene with water uh, and reflections. So we got some blue all over the place. Um, I'm gonna a little bit of orange here and there. So even on a sunny day, you're gonna have some orange in here. And some green, maybe a little bit of green. Throw in some of this green. I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, it looks crazy right now. It looks like a flock of angry bees. So, we don't know what's gonna happen. That's the fun part. So did I forget any colors? Well, I think I'll throw a little bit of, uh, come on, cadmium red deep here a little bit, maybe a little bit here. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my, my big brush and I'm gonna try to think about gestures. Gestures, okay, clouds, gestures. Okay, so, and there's gonna be a corresponding reflection over here. So, it looks crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay. Alright. So you just have some great music in the background. And you just have this. Blur it all together. Who cares? It's paint. Paint's not meant to be in the tube. Okay? We're, we're freeing the paint from the tube, just like Free Willy. Okay, we're freeing the paint that's all bound up in that tube, and it's going to just go flying, flying out. Okay? So now we have this beautiful, gosh, no, I don't know what it is. Okay, so now, question is, I mean, I'm going to have, I think it's going to be, the horizon line's going to be right here, the water. So, I'm going to have some mountains here. I'm going to have uh, a couple of the mountains in St. Mary Lake and a little bit over here. So, I want now, now that I know where I'm at, I want there to be the light coming from here, coming down through all these clouds. So, I'm just going to play around with what I have. So I'm going to try See, if you study nature, you study clouds, I mean you go outside and you do all this plein air painting, I mean, what's it all for? I mean, don't you get to just have fun? I mean, once you know what trees look like, um, I mean, you know, maybe it takes half a lifetime to, to figure it all out. But the ultimate goal is to be free. So, so I'm going to try 
Now I'm going to have the, the there's going to be all these layers of clouds that are going to be hitting, they're getting sunlight right through here. So there's the, a prevailing gesture in, in the clouds. There's So you have this very, very complex sky with lots of, you know, layers of clouds, which I absolutely love. I mean, this just just something that I have sort of brought from my experience of nature. And you know, if there's too much of one color, you just take it out. It's easy. But it's all direct painting. There's no. There's just making it up as you go along. I mean. That's really fun. Okay. Now, you know, you can take your soft brush right now and play these games. Okay. The rays of the sun coming down through. Just simplify it. Pull it together. developed. You see, I mean, oil paint, you have to understand, well, at least in my world, okay, when I read about the old masters, you know, going back to Rubens and Titian, I mean, they knew that oil was special because you could just do everything and anything you wanted, and the thing wouldn't be setting up and drying before you could play around with it for a while. And so, what I try to do is teach people to, to learn enough so that they can have this kind of freedom, ultimately. And But you don't learn this, I mean, I needed a teacher to, to at least open my doors for me, so that I could, I could think that this was possible. And um, in, in my site, I teach, I teach you how to, to think this way, and I don't, you know, it's just, it's so much fun. There's no, there's no, you know, looking at a camera or slide or anything, I don't care. I'm just being free. So, I mean, the mountains bleeding into the sky, there's a unity, a, a beautiful unity in everything. I cannot stand are pieces, unrelated pieces. So you're pulling everything together in this painting. Okay? You know, classical music is like that too. You pull, you 
have a unity, you have a key, you have variations. And, and that's what makes it beautiful, in my opinion. For my own, my own gut. So if your gut's like mine, you'll want to study so that you get to this point. This is the goal. So we're getting this sense of light here coming out. Now, you know, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I don't fall in love with anything. No, I'm just playing around with it. I want there to be unity above all else. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you look at the masters too. You see that many of them um, compose this way. That's what I think. So, I mean, when you're a scholar, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, not knowing the dates and places and all that stuff. Well, I mean, knowing who came before who, but knowing who was able to, to free oil paint and to take advantage of, of the abstract. And those are the great painters who were able to do that. So, so now I'm, I'm playing around with these beautiful subtle half tones here. Okay. And putting a little bit of yellow, I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen on this painting. It's just a journey. But, you know, you know where the sun is, okay? And so you feel the light emanating from the sun coming down overhead, okay? So the tops of the clouds are going to be absolutely sense of the light coming down here too. So maybe what I want to do now is here, or bigger brush, here it is, okay, and play with the, the bigger clouds, and get a little bit of, um, okay, I'll start going into here, because we relate our clouds, everything, everything relates, so if I want to do a cloud, 
I'm going to dip into here to, so I get a related color um, to the cloud. Okay, so I want You know, and you might try something here and it doesn't work. Well, you've got, you've got three days <laughs> before this really dries to change your mind. So, I mean, you have to unleash the power of oil. To unleash it. I mean, it really is. You need to take oil out of those tubes and, and out of your, the mindset that you're painting it like you're painting acrylic or something where you can't change anything, where you can't be free um, you know how the colors mix then you're, you're totally free so maybe I'll have um, rising mist right here you know I can change it any way I want Maybe I'll put, so again I'll, I'll take down here and I'll put it up into here. rising mist with the clouds overhead. Maybe that's what I want to do. I don't know. Okay, so we'll get some cloud shadows over here. You can see the orange. And you just, you know, you know how to neutralize colors. So if this one is impertinent and it wants to exert itself. Well, you add a little red or green and you neutralize it. So you go down here, neutralize, neutralize, but you still have some of that beautiful warm orange in there. So, so I want to have another, I want to have this mist shooting up. So I'm always thinking about the whole thing of the diagonals. So let's have a big blob of mist coming up here. I mean, I just love it. It's just shooting up like this. And then just going like this. Okay, there's the reflection. So maybe, see now it's starting to tell me which way it wants to go. And you get a dialogue with the painting. And that's exciting when the painting is talking back to you. I know it sounds psychotic, but the painting is, is telling you where it wants to go. Each, every time you get a little closer, it says, go this way, go this way. And, um, you know, I mean, you got to have courage and confidence that, so what? If it leads you down a wrong path, so what? Just put the painting away and start another one. You'll figure it out. Eventually, you'll figure it out. Don't ever get rid of the painting or scrape it. At least in my opinion, don't scrape it. Because um, you can always look back and see where you went off wrong. But, I mean, I like lost and found edges, I like the power of mist, and in, in the Glacier Park area, you know, it's very moist here, not as moist as Washington State, but you get this fabulous, these storms and mountains, 
and it's it's very exciting. So I'm, I'm just, you know, this is the fun part. It's all fun. But this is the part that you're just watching things happen. See? Now I'm just softly pulling this sky together. Now, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, it's too early to finish. It's too early. I need to live with this guy right now. Okay, this way. All right. Okay. So you express what's in your heart right away. You don't. You don't sit there and say, "Well, I don't know what to paint. I'm, maybe I'm going to think about my trip." Uh, to Glacier Park and uh, you know 2001 and look at my old photographs I mean that's a stale memory that's a stale situation I mean today's different from tomorrow and so if I were to start this painting tomorrow it would look totally different and I have no idea why or how and I don't care I just love the way we can play around with it See so now how I'm, I'm pulling it out, it's starting to look good, but it's also saying, I need this, I need this. So, so you're basically, you know, once you start this process, you know, the, you're, you're creating a little bit of a monster because now, your job is just to, to run around and, and feed me, feed me. That's what the painting is saying. Feed me. Uh, more, more of this, more of that. See, it's saying what it needs. And your job is not to, to fight it, but to hear what it's saying and to go with it. So, so now I'm, I'm getting this, this idea. Now, now, now it's at a certain point, you know, you can then uh, go back and, you know, start getting a little bit more specific with the mountain. Okay. And I'm using the same colors that I have in the sky. Because a mountain, as you learn from, from me, the mountain is really part of the sky, okay? You can't touch it, you can't reach out and touch it, it's too big, it's too far away. So, where is it? It's sticking up into the sky. You're, there's sky between you and it. So. This is the very famous, uh, I think it's Citadel Mountain right here, but it's part of the St. Mary configuration. See now, it's just a matter of adding uh, a sharp line to the top, and suddenly the mountain becomes delineated from the sky. But remember, the mountain is part of the sky, it's swimming in the sky. So it partakes of the sky. See, the, the, this is what's, what the photograph cheats you of, this kind of profound unity. And you end up, you know, obeying the, the monster, the one-eyed monster. And you have no, you're, you're just becoming a human extension of a laser printer. I mean, why do you want to do that? So. But then, you know, copying something and not creating is easier than, I mean, it's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle in which you're just copying the picture, finding the pieces that go with it. Okay, if that's your thing, then have at it. But I'm telling you, there's a way, if you put a little bit more 
investment in learning, you can have this freedom and this spontaneity and this expressive power. So, again, you know, the, the cloud is floating above the mountain like that. And floating in the sky, the same sky that the mountain is in. Okay? So, and then, you know, again, I'm just using your common colors in the uh, palette. There's nothing fancy here. Just blues, yellow, reds. And then this mountain comes here. Um, this is uh, the next mountain. I forgot what it's called. Well, the Indians called it one thing. We call it another thing. And then when we're long gone, some other civilization will call it something else. But the mountains will still be there. Okay, and they will. Some of it will crumble. So the the mountains are a part of the whole process here. They come and go over time. They crumble, and they have form. They have, I mean, they have uh, uh, anatomy. Everything has anatomy. Okay, the clouds have anatomy. So does the mountain. So we're just putting it in now. So, you know, we can correct all this later and put, refine it with more refined colors. Okay, but we know ballpark what it's going to be. And then line up the reflection. You know, of course, you know, I mean, you, if you want to do this mountain exactly right, you know, work from a study, and, you know, if you have to go um, just to know the profile, go to the camera, go to a photo that you took of it, but at this stage you whip out the photograph and you say, well, what's that line, okay? It's really just you know, a line that's a, a portrait of a mountain, it's just a specific set of lines. And, okay, I don't, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but I'm not a slave to the camera at all here. So, this is, so we got the clouds, they're billowing up, there's forces of nature going on here, okay? Mystery. And then, okay, and then right here, all right, we have shadow right here, see, so, you know, when you, when you sign up for the class, you get all kinds of things, you get uh, observations of the masters, and what to look for, or what I look for. Uh, you get to talk to me, uh, you get to show me critiques of your work, and then I will work on them. So I think it's a, you know, pretty reasonable thing. See, I, I had to
So I'm going to have the, this cloud coming out of this series of mountains. Just These are the mountains over there. One's, one's called Fusilade Mountain, the other one is, um, well, I don't know what they're called. Got. Okay. So if you don't like something, you can just lose it gradually. the medium will do. Let's see, oil paint, you learn the medium. The medium is the message. In oil painting it is. Um, so here we go, we're going to pull these together. Okay. See, it's a little too, the edge is too hard, it's okay. There's the other side of St. Mary Lake. Okay, it's right here. And it's much closer this side. All kinds of trees and things like that. But I'm putting in a warmer color. So and you'll notice I'm I'm always working on the entire painting at the same time. And that that is, I think, the best way to do it. Because that way you make sure that everything's related. So I'm adding some, some uh, sap green here to my color mix. Okay, and then the, the trees. There's a... working into the sky here, and then we're going to have a little bit of a reflection, of course. All right. So now the painting is getting, um, telling me now to put in more green here. So, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's the best possible way to paint a painting. See? And so, you know, green has got more yellow in it, so it's going to come forward. And, you know, I'm not worried about the uh, actual trees per se. I'm not finishing. See, finishing, people finish too soon. And you know, there's a 
You could, you could... I prefer to save the finishing for almost another day when I'm in that mode. But to create like this and to know that finishing is relatively easy. It's a little, sometimes it's a little uh, laborious, but the fun part is, is coming up with this. constantly pull and push things around and the more you push and pull the more the closer they become related to each other so here's the mountain over there and there's the lake So I'm going to have the, the sun is going to come down here and hit, and hit this mountain right here. slope catching sunlight
the sun here and there, pitching on the mountains. Alright, so now, now comes where you start saying, okay, this is what you want to do, the paintings told me, uh, and now it's a question of, okay, let's finish it. So we put 20 minutes into starting it, and, you know, there'll be a, a substantial amount of time in, in fixing things. edges of the clouds to getting getting some reds in the distance some pinks white. Okay, we keep going back. We like a nervous bee. You know, a bee and uh, a flower garden. One, one to the next. You gotta get, bounce around. And slowly the whole painting comes. So I'm, I'm using the, here we go. So we're going back to the, from the pinks to the yellows and the very, very high yellows, right closer to the sun, and yellows and oranges. So it's here we go for Here, I'd like the, the cloud here to catch some some of the light here. I can always change my mind if I don't like it. See, because it's coming from this way, and so.
I got to keep track of which clouds are closer and which are farther away. So, all right. Now I'm going to hear some clouds up here. Okay. It gives us a chance to clean up our mountain here. See, I notice this edge is too jumpy right here. So what am I going to do about that? It's simple. You know? You don't fall in love with anything. You just... Everything will just... Come together. Same thing here, it just jumps up too much. Well, so. So we have this cloud that's just sort of floating. Oops, we got some green in there. Whoops. Well, let's get some red. Hit that. Oops, too much red. Okay, well, we can make that work. Restless sky, it's my favorite. See? So we have the thrust here, thrust there, counter thrust. Well, that's what I'm feeling right now. You know, everybody paints what they feel. you have go back to this see you gotta have dark here because work you in painting you definitely have to have a sense of your shadow architecture because you're not going to get a light effect paint is not light okay and you know I mean we talk about different times of day that uh, the impressionists light light, midday light. Um, 
the Romantics and the Hudson River painters. They liked uh, dawn and dusk a lot. And they liked uh, ephemeral things, whereas uh, Corot and others preferred uh, late afternoon light, but, but earlier light than a lot of the uh, Romantics. Of course, there's uh, overflow. So, uh, the trick is, you know, you find your own light, but, but, see, I like mystery. To me, I love mystery. Mystery of lost and found edges and things disappearing and reappearing. See, so. You, you put a strong architecture of shadow in there, and reflection you just you have to constantly be be um, taking the idea down and developing that too okay Now, you know, here we go, we want to play, let's have this shadow down here, let's have this in shadow, okay. Okay, now we have a cloud to make a shadow right here. Right there, shadow, cloud up here, shadow down there. And then maybe we can throw together um, a rim lighting on this citadel right here, this one right here. See if you like it, you know. Now you go back and you start pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling.
trying to get a sense of the reflection. So, you know, you get to this point now where you, you know, I've, I've just been basically painting with one brush, you know, allowing things to mix. there's snow on these mountains. The snow in full light is much more powerful a reflector than the sky. So you got to leave that on there crisply. Crisply, okay? and match it down here. And maybe we're going to have a little bit of disturbed water here. Okay. Now maybe it's time to play around with the blue in the sky. Let's get my blue out here. So maybe I want to have a little bit more consistency here. Continue this idea of the sweeping. this with that. Let's do it that way. Okay. Connect. Connect. <laughs> 